Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant, we're back for some more Pillars of Eternity with the Triple Crown difficulty settings. We are currently exploring Galvinos' workshop, because this seems to be a prerequisite to be able to access Durgan's battery. And, I mean, we've explored this entire area over here, uh, I think I just have this bottom section and this upper section left. So, I had spotted some enemies over here. Which I'm gonna pull to this choke point here. Okay, so these are not very tough. They simply like to suicide. Oh, you didn't decide to suicide? Why? Come on, blow up. Thank you. I'm not sure if I should. Oh, she still hit me. Jesus Christ. Oh, no, it didn't. Sorry. She just killed itself. I'm not sure if we get experience or development of the cyclopedia by letting them self-destruct i actually don't know oh uh, okay i got too close but that's fine you better go over there and the usual we're gonna buff and just kill things oh there's one over there there's two over three over there Okay, so, it's a good thing that Aloth didn't actually queue up any action because I'm gonna need him to use his Shadow Flame. And I would say like here should hit everything. Perfect. So let's toss some books here to kill both of these. And we are gonna focus on the ones in the back. So hit that and hit that. Doing the job. Okay, uh, paralyzed for 9.5 seconds, let's just deal damage to it, or even, I have a better idea, let's get an amplified wave on top of it there over here. Okay, perfect. We can all focus on that, dead, go there, go endurance, yeah buddy. And down he goes. Oh. oh, it's just, okay. <laughs> it looked like a unique weapon. It was not. What is it? To my great sadness. Okay, so this Eddie does not appear to be trapped. Exceptional Morning Star, and we have a cell key. Hey. I think I've already lockpicked the cell key, which I think it was this one. I think this is where we actually find Galvino, so I'm not gonna go there yet. I might just be misremembering, but still. I wanna explore all of the area before, you know, reaching the conclusion. Testing grounds, laboratory, and workroom. We gotta go all the way around. Unless this lever here opens up a pathway on this bookcase, which it kind of looks like it does. <laughs> and I'm just wasting time walking around. There's some okay. Let's have you scout ahead then. Unstable construct. Uh, I guess I can just shoot you. Your thoughts must okay. go deeply into He's not even moving. I think it's because I'm very far away or something. Okay, now he's moving. That's kind of strange. So much a sap. Hey. And that's a kill. Okay. Margaret's fire cast light. A flash construct. A couple of flash constructs. We're just gonna use a choke point here. Um and, you know, usual things are gonna happen. And that's it. Oh, that's coming in. Okay. So let's get a vigorous defense here. You two can start shooting over there. You're gonna put a chill fog there. And when these guys start coming in, I'm gonna have to focus on them. 
Kana. No, back away. Okay, so that one is starting to come in. You focus here. Let's throw out the Shadow Flame. Uh, this should hit. Yes, there's another one coming in as well. I will have to beware of that. I want an Amplified Wave, which should also knock her down. Okay, she got paralyzed and knocked down. Perfect. Keep shooting. You are gonna just shoot over here. Okay, she got stunned by the Chill Fog. Nice. I'm... I, I don't have line of sight for them, which is kind of annoying. Okay. Well, okay, there it is holding the fort. Okay, you stay back, students. Just do that. Shoot, 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 shoot. Okay. Uh, do you guys want to come in or okay. what? You're just going to stay there. Okay. So, <laughs> can I can I shoot this one? Yes. Oh, she can. Okay, good. This guy's finally coming in. Let's knock him down if we can. Let's work on the guy. Good. My mind feels Chill Fog has worn off. Vigorous Defense clearly also wore off because he's starting to take a little bit more damage here. But now we can move. So we're gonna get some books here. And then shoot, you're gonna clear the way. Thank you. Careful. Okay, we're gonna stay where we are. Except you, you're gonna do this. Oh, it's gotta be someone else. Uh, go here. Do that. Okay, good. So much. Would you guys die? They're being very annoying. I think my rogue wasn't shooting as well. Uh, let's do a disintegration here. And then a sound speed. Careful. Shoot there, shoot there. Good. Yeah, there has been taking a lot of damage here. Jesus. Okay. Let's take care of this. Ooh, 13 difficulty. It's a good thing I did not step on that. I can tell you that much. This hulking contraption hums with power. Approaching within a few feet sets a peculiar buzzing in your teeth. Okay. Well. So my rogue is going to be the one exploring first in case hey. there's traps around here. Which there likely are. There's one. Can't disarm. An impressive assortment of wine bottles lines these shelves. Most appear to be Valian Vintages. Okay. Some gold. What else do we have? Really? This isn't trapped? Seems very odd to me. This platter has gone entirely untouched, leaving the tantalizing meal to the flies. Hmm. Experimental notes. This hastily written entry is dotted with blots of ink. I refuse to continue wasting my time with these stitchwork grotesqueries. What work is spent in granting the rotting corpse the feeblest spark of life is later tripled in repairs. Truly, they come apart at the seams. The sight of them in the corridors has come to disgust me. They hold nothing of the subject's vitality, intelligence, coordination, only a brute obedience. Flesh has too gentle a grasp upon the essence, that much is clear. Little wonder the fools at Brackenberry were willing to pawn these sorry specimens off so cheaply. Madico, the stench! Okay, 
So this guy was trying to create these constructs, thinking they would be they would be better than they actually are. And you know what? There's camping supplies here, so I am gonna bring my party for a rest. Of course. Because it there is kind of badly injured. So we're gonna rest. I shall be discreet. Uh, we're gonna swap our accuracy bonus to vessels because that's what these are. Okay, perfect. We can rest, and now we can take these. Ah, much better. There we go. So you see, this is interactable. So I think that lever over there opens this up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so now we only have this one area to explore. Nobody step on that, please. Let's keep going. I see something. Right. My rogue goes in first. An iron constant. <sighs> okay, so three iron constructs and two unstable constructs. Sure. Come at me, bitches. Buff, 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 buff. <gasps> okay, now they're getting closer. We are going to paralyze them. Hey. You will turn on vigorous defense. Oh, just in case. We're gonna go for the chill fog over there. And we, we have to kill those. So let's start working on that. You knock this guy down. Okay, chill fog is out. That one's dead. So we're gonna focus our books on this guy. And I'm gonna focus my range DPS on that guy as well. Plus an amplified wave. Which should also hit. Okay. Good. Everything died. You stay over there. Leave it to me. Okay, you circle round and you three kill. So much for you. Okay. Easy enough. Uh, I want to go in with my rogue. Hey. Because again, this might be trapped. Where there's a pick there's a way. Oh. A cape of withdrawal, plus 15 defense when disengaging, sucks. This mannequin's head has been all but seared away by some unknown spell. The wood is warped and pitted through. Oh, okay. More experimental notes. This discarded note reads, Madico, three weeks of hard work gone and a fully articulated frame with them. These crude materials are more unstable than expected, though no less expensive. I will try a slower process. Ah, more electricity, perhaps. Along the bottom of the page, a scrawled addendum reads. Too much electricity will require more subjects. All right. Right of the untamed wild and some lockpicks and a bone and a ruby. Okay. Hey. So this means that we have completely explored this region. We're now going to go into the final section. I think I might have I might have had to come here anyway <clears throat> to get the key for this door because it said it requires the right key in order to open it. Now, from memory, <clears throat> Galvino, I don't think he's hostile. So I don't think we're any in any risk of going into a fight or something like that but I'll, I'll still I can be somewhat cautious yeah okay I had a feeling hey oh cutscene Galvino I, I like I like his his portrait very cool an elderly man hunches over a cluttered desk in the back of the workshop his flesh is pulled tightly around thin Fragile looking bones, except around his neck, where it hangs in loose swaddles. He turns as you enter, a skull already chiseled into his lined face. Back again? I told you. I like that he's voiced. He hesitates, squinting at you from behind smudged and, dirt and dusty spectacles. Of course, a fresh fool to replace the last fools. What brings you stomping through my workshop, eh? He draws his words out, looking you up and down. A sneer creeps across his face. <laughs> I, 
I sell false teeth, heard you could use a new set. Oh my god. I've got questions about Durgan's battery in the White Forge. Straight to business, no nonsense. We appreciate that, don't we? Don't we, eh? He turns the bronze golem over his shoulder. Anything for a breather from your endless yammering. This is the devil of Kerok. The voice echoes from within the golem. Aye, I've got a fancy for this one already. This one already. Here's that Timora. Another who would tolerate your barbs and insults. <laughs> Anyhow. But you come seeking the White Forge. Like they all do. Boys with smooth cheeks and wild dreams. Girls with bright ribbons tied next to their scabbards. <laughs> I, I like this description. His voice rises and falls with the sing-song of mockery. Old men and women too, seeking a final blaze of glory before they're snuffed out for another turn at the wheel. Sound familiar? His smile is rigid as he looks at you, and the corner of his eye twitches. Hmm. There's a lot of good, good answers here. So, one, two, and three are all excellent answers. I'm guessing this is like taking a shot at him for sticking over here in the darkness. But yeah, that's a lot of bitterness. Maybe I should ask the same thing. Save your breath. He hawks a wad of phlegm from the back of his throat and spits into the corner. Oh, lovely. I have this conversation with every pig-headed swashbuckler those Postanagos and stalwarts send here. Go see Garvino, they say. Surely he'll help you. Hmm, must have slipped their minds what a busy and important fellow you are. <laughs> in the silence that follows, the temperature in the room seems to drop. Galvino glares at her. They should have let them stone you. <laughs> would have silenced your endless rattling forever. The hanging folds of skin beneath his neck tremble. <laughs> then you'd have naught but those frostbitten inbreds for company. True. I guess this is what it would be like if Aeloth and Isilmir were two separate people. Come now, I sound nothing like either of them. <laughs> You're upset. There's an old wound with Stalwart then. <laughs> the spiteful imbeciles destroyed my career. Ruined years of work. <clears throat> but let us focus on the reason for your visit, yes? The villagers and their adventurers hammer and pry the battery as if they were laying siege to some moldering lord's keep. He swats the air in front of his face. But those stones were laid by some of the finest builders ever to have lived. Disciples of Abidon in the truest sense. They will not fall by the whims of any kith. And the door itself, it is infused with living essence. He holds his hands before him and his eyes are, wider, are wide with wonder. This... Is there something that indicates this? I don't think so. I'm gonna go with this one because I'm curious. So that's why the dwarves disappeared. They got locked out of their own fortress. Shoulder, eh? I speak into seriousness. He shakes his head, but amusement tugs at the corner of his eye. Oh, that was a joke? Okay, I, I kinda missed it then. The park groaning of Durgan's battery perished within their own keep. Victims of a violent disagreement among their own commandants. His mouth twists with a wicked grin. Surely in the village you have heard stories, no? Disappearing caravans, tracks in the snow, screams from the high towers. He pauses, watching your expression with a re reckoned tears glee. Well, go on. I like this story so far. The work of spirits still trapped in the battery. And a testament to those impenetrable walls. Eh, I don't like spirits. He raps on the mortared stone of his own home. But the door of the keep, the one the Pargrunen filled with essence, oh, it was made to listen, to recognize its masters. Uh, so I need a door to recognize me? Traditional Aptapo cultures revolved around language. Words revealed who they were and where they were from. An interesting tradition. I could start introducing everyone in verse. That is why you need a contact. He holds up a twitching finger. What's a cantec? Some liken it to a poem. 
others to enhance him. In reality, it is more than either. He holds one hand out, turning, in it, turning it this way and that in a balancing motion. A contact is a statement of purpose, a declaration of identity. Each is unique to its stronghold. Ha! Seal your door with a key of words and any liar can talk his way through. There is nothing built of words that won't break when the slightest stress is applied. Thus, to enter a fortress like Dorgan's battery, you would stand at the gate and recite its cantec. He spreads his arms, his face aglow. Thank you for sharing, that's very interesting. Verus, a shame the Postanagos here cannot appreciate such elegance. To learn the Kantek, you must speak with one of the dwarves of Durgan's battery. Oh my god. A shame they are all dead, no? He rubs his hands together, pacing. I'm guessing this is something to do with the fact that with a Watcher, maybe I can speak to a soul and it can tell me the Kantek? But no doubt their souls live on in one or two of the villagers of Stalwart. Like fine wine poured into a cheap pot. <laughs> Man, he's so upset at them. Derision curls his lips. But to identify them, that is the first problem. You would need the skills of an anamancer. I'm a watcher. The golem swivels her head sharply toward you. Her mask of a face and the glass eyes behind it betray no emotion, but it seems as if she's watching you carefully. A watcher? The Verus? If this is true, then you could find a sole descendant from Durgan's battery, no question. But the greater difficulty remains. Galvino rubs his gaunt, whiskered cheeks. You would have to learn the Kantek from the dormant soul. And to do that, you would have to awaken it. Oh, and that's not good, right? Because then they would be like Aloth. They would have to live with the other soul. But this awakening would be permanent, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Well, crap. Whoever you awaken will live with the memories and the personality of a past life. Maybe peacefully, maybe not. His bony shoulders rise in a shrug. That is why you must pay attention to the soul you would awaken, no? It is a uh, monumental thing to impose on another, but these are the very people who wish to rediscover the White Forge, Verus. He removes his spectacles and polishes the dirty lens with his tunic. Awaken someone? How would I do that? An awakening is merely the jolting of a dormant soul into consciousness. He makes a bursting motion with his hands, playing his fingers wide. When such things happen normally, it is because something has reminded the subject of a past life, often violently so. He smacks his workbench with surprising vigor. A lot flinches. Thus, to awaken one of the former dwarves of Durgan's battery, you will need to address that soul, and preferably by name. He folds his hands together, steepling his fingers. But show some care. When you examine these souls, whatever it is you watchers do, you may see images, memories. Hmm. He leans forward, his back hunched. These are moments of special import. What you see will tell you much about the person, and uh, perhaps the condition in which they awaken. He raises his hoary eyebrows and tilts his head back. Awaken them from a traumatic memory, and who knows? Maybe they awaken thirsty for blood. Or maybe you awaken someone else. <laughs> he cackles again. I and who knows? Could be there's a soul or two could use a good whipping up. Here, this has been tuned to the Eon of Durgan's battery. Use it near the villagers, and it should tell you if one has a soul old enough to have come from the battery. He rummages around and produces an unfamiliar divide, a device. We've gained the item Galvinus's Resonance Amplifier. Okay, so the Kentic is all I need? Who can say? None have yet opened Durgan's battery. Oh, I guess I need the, the Antec and the other tile, which I already had. Galvino raises his hands, palms up. But the ones that came before you... I think they got close. You may wish to find them and see what they discovered. I found what's left of them. A journal and a tile. Then perhaps the Kantek is what you now require. Okay, I see. Thank you for your help. He dismisses the thought with a wave of a hand. It is a pleasure to have such a courteous guest for a change. 
A shame you must dirty your boots in Stalwart. I am quite courteous. <laughs> I'm going with him. Are you? The golem looks between you, her neck turning on its oil joint. You? Go to Stalwart? Is this your macabre sense of humor, or uh, has something gone to rust in that beautiful head I crafted? <laughs> Galvino stares at her agape. No one will bother me while I'm with him. Besides, I can help him find people in Stalwart. The golem's burnished face is eerily impassive. You... you haven't been to Stalwart in 13 years. And this watcher sees souls. What help could you be? Besides, I have need of you here. You owe whatever remains of your wicked life to me. A frown sours on his lips as he taps his chest with a crooked finger. That sounds like slavery. The golem says nothing, but her hand's essence smolders. Resentment rises from her in shimmering waves. She swivels her head to look at you. What's the story between you two? <laughs> this charming specimen is a convicted murderer. <coughs> the devil of Carrick, she's called. Mighty fine of you to start with my good qualities. And you wonder why we don't get more visitors. <laughs> Killed over a dozen people before they finally caught up to her in Stalwart. Perfect company for lonely camps and mountain passes, no? He nudges you, all the while grinning wickedly at the motionless golem. Hey, I know how to start a campfire. The only reason she's not a frozen corpse is because I convinced the old mayor to let me try an experiment. A shadow passes over his face. Why is she called the Devil of Karak? She committed her first crime in the village of Karak. Burned their family alive in their home. Wonderful. He shrugs. Did the same thing in half a dozen other villages, but the name stuck. Aren't you afraid she'll murder you? She may be mad, but she's no fool. She wouldn't survive long on her own. If the villagers didn't send a hunting party after her, the Eremans would claim her. Her joints and mechanisms require maintenance, and she cannot perform all of it herself. See, he's reminding me, in case I get any bright ideas. <laughs> so you put a person's soul into a metal body. He leans back, raising his hands. Into a work of art! Look at this! Craftsmanship worthy of a jeweler! He traces a scroll work that runs along the golem's jaw. Fully articulated joints! Capable of grasping a pen and writing her own name. He grabs her hand and delicately bends her tapered fingers. And of crushing your throat. <laughs> she snatches her hand away. Show me another smith anywhere in the Deerwood who is capable of such delicacy and precision. She is a masterpiece. Galvino steps back and takes a longer look at her. I take it your experiment didn't go over so well with the rest of the village? Ah, uh, here we go. She rolls her eyes, rasping them against their sockets. They were going to stone her anyway. Why not allow her to be put to some useful purpose? Okay, so now it makes sense why he was talking about letting, her, letting them stone her. His lips curl back from yellowing teeth. My life's ambition. To serve somebody's useful purpose. I approached Mayor Sinahio and begged. He saw the potential and allowed me the privilege of attempting my little experiment. He sneers at the words and the indignity they recall. His shoulders are stooped and his teeth bared. Then, I accomplished what few anamancers have even dreamed of. No academic support, no patron. Just me in the middle of nowhere. He jabs a finger into his concave chest. Oh, now you got them all wound up. <laughs> I transferred a fully intact soul from a living subject to a fabricated body. She retained her personalities, her memories, all of it. He claws the air with one thick veined hand. Yet the villagers saw only a stolen corpse. He throws up his hands. And why did you build her? Why build a fortress or a village or anything? To make something that keeps that... A disgusted sigh rattles in his throat. It was the early days of the legacy. My peers in the colleges of Anamancy were filling the Hollowborn with the souls of animals. He pauses, scratching his chin. You're right. By comparison, this sounds perfectly sane. He rolls his eyes. I thought there was a better way. He is silent for several seconds, his gaze growing distant. One with a plum academy job back in Salona? Don't forget that part. 
He glares at her with narrowed eyes. Okay, well, that's all I wanted to know. She's a fine specimen. Her personality notwithstanding. He waves one hand in a circular motion. The golem says nothing, but her essence... Okay, it's the same thing as before. Well, we can either say, I'd like her to travel with me, or I can say I have no need of the golem's company right now. And in truth, I don't really have any need for her. I'm not really gonna put her in my party. But just to show it off, I'm gonna say I'd like her to travel with me. Quay? No, no, no. You don't know what you ask. He shakes his head, waving his hands. This woman, the devil of Karek, she was a notorious murderer. Burned people alive all over the region. Yeah, we, we've been over this. Besides, she works for me. After all, I am the one who preserved her. He straightens his back and looks you up and down, taking your measure. <laughs> I like this option. Let me parade around town. It'll infuriate those villagers. You'd like that, wouldn't you? So you get use of the devil's services, and I get the satisfaction <laughs> of knowing those stiffnecks are sweating through their small clothes, eh? <laughs> He sighs, but a smug grin has already worked its way across his face. It's a deal. <gasps> Fine price for a blacksmith striker. Suppose I should be flattered. And there you have it. A bargain. He gives you a sardonic grin. A moment. You are going back to Stalwart, yes? Perhaps you could do me a favor. Galvino gives you a thoughtful frown, and by the way, I, I pressed accept right there, I didn't really go over her, uh, but she's a rogue. She, she's a companion and she's a rogue. Tell me about this favor. There is a man in the village named Grind, the head fisherman. Oh, maybe this connects to the quest we had. The rest of Stalwart kisses his feet because he fills their stinking plates with speckleback. But... I know he's not as virtuous as he seems. His face crinkles in vicious glee. What exactly do you want me to do to him? Or seems like you have a history with Grinda. That self-righteous meddler engineered my eviction from the village. He turned them all against me. Now I want him to feel the scorn of those mush-brained imbeciles. <laughs> What exactly do you want me to do to him? Humiliate him, of course. Show his neighbors what he truly is. And let him live with the disgrace. He points vaguely in the direction of the village with his thin arm trembling. He's always been a ripple sponge addict. Just got good at hiding it once his sainted sister died and left him in charge of the fishery. But he keeps a stash in the fishery. Sneaks in at night when the others have gone home, and emerges sluggish and red-eyed a few hours later. I want you to expose him. Go to the fishery after dark when it's empty. Find his ripple sponge and show it to Renengild. So, okay, I think we've already done this, and I think this is why I had an idea that that particular building had like a, a night and day, you know, different cycle. I see. Uh, do not answer me now. But when you return to that festering eyesore and smell the stink of fish that hangs in the air, uh, consider what I've said. He grins. Besides, you appreciate a good joke, don't you? The Verus, this will be a great one. But be sure to approach the fishery by night, when it's empty. Uh, they will give you no end of trouble if they see you stealing during the day. Okay. What were those concerts I encountered in your workshop? The other projects, they are none of your concern. He waves a hand and looks quickly away from you. This guy has a lot of dialogue. You seem pretty eager to change the subject. <laughs> he mutters furiously under his breath, raising his hands to the ceiling. For years I've been trying to create another like the Devil of Carrick. Yet those post Anacos in Star Wars destroyed my machinery. His drooping skin trembles in his rage. Now, I can only create these broken, mindless things. The devil remains my most perfect creation. His lips twist with a taste of something bitter. Why do you need more golems? I can't present the devil of Carrick to the academics, ah. can I? A mad woman and a murderer? No. <clears throat> I need to bring a success to the republics. I see. He rubs his hands together, frowning. 
I've heard enough. Okay. So, farewell. I think we have enough dialogue out of him. Let's see we have the quest, then. the one that got away. And, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to steal. Well, Because I'm a rogue. <laughs> so we can take this. What do you think you're doing? What, bitch? Can you even see me? This appears to be a crude rendering of the mountain surrounding Durgan's battery. A blade in the dark. He shouldn't be able to spot me. Right? He actually spots me very quickly. Hmm, sad. I'm particularly curious about that thing over there. Okay, well, in any case, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, now we know that we need that Kantek to be able to open the door to the fortress. And that we will need to awaken the soul in Stalwart in able to do so. In order to do so, sorry. We've cleared out the entirety of Galvinus's workshop. Which also means that we have finished with uh, Long Watch Falls. With the exception of the cave. And I'm actually thinking I might go to that cave sooner than I thought. Because I kind of I kind of want to go there, <laughs> and I, I think we have more than enough, you know, firepower and levels to be able to deal with that. But for right now, we're gonna go and continue this quest here, and I want to see if this um... ah, so you see, so this got updated. I met Green the Hand. Galvino believes that Grinda keeps a stash of ripple sponge somewhere in the fishery. He warned me to search the building at night when all the fishermen have gone home. <clears throat> okay. So I've done that already, but... Wait, 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 wait. Wait, when was this? Oh no, when was this? I didn't see it. Okay, sorry, give me a second. I spotted something. Man, if there's a hidden item, I want a hidden item. So was it here? It was not here. Okay. But it, it was definitely after the dialogue with Galvino because the Devil of Karak joined, left, and then I spotted a hidden object. So, this is the way I took, I believe. I'm just pressing tab to see if I find something. Oh, there's nothing. No, there's no hidden... Oh, wait, 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 this is... I'm so dumb. This is not stealing. Okay, so <laughs> it's actually a good thing I came back. What? It's not stealing, dude. What am I doing wrong? Uh, I'm I'm getting a little bit scared. If I take this, will you get upset? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I think by not. Taking the things, he doesn't actually complain. He won't see me coming. Okay, well, I don't know if there was in fact something that got spotted and I didn't see it. Or if it was just something over there that I've already looted. Okay, so let's exit. And, oh god. Half the team going one way, <laughs> the other half going the other way. Sure, sure, that's fine. Um, we're gonna leave and yeah so we're gonna go back to stalwart we're gonna find the souls that can be awakened and then we'll have to choose which soul to awaken and now we know that if we do it it's gonna be a permanent change and there there looks to be like a good choice and a bad choice I have I don't really remember 
which souls that are or which is the good one <laughs> we're gonna have to play it by ear okay so this should be the the closest shortcut to leave this place oh oh okay are you serious i can't leave from here the road continues climbing for a short distance before turning sharply down into the pass beyond. God damn it. Okay, so let's go over here. And the Devil of Karok, I can't really uh, see her any further. Outside of Kednu, I think. But yeah, she's a rogue. I, I never really liked uh, the look of her. And... I'm playing a rogue, so I'm not going to take another rogue in my party. So, Stalwart Village. We're going to find these souls. And I think I'm going to swap back the Grieving Mother to the Lead Spitter. To see, once again, how I feel playing with that weapon. Because if I intend to continue playing with the Stormcaller, uh, then I'm going to have to... Um, to uh, respec her, train her into hunting bows. But I think this is, I think, I don't know. No, I honestly don't know which is better. Okay, so it's night time. So I'm actually gonna take the opportunity to go into the fishery and take care of this quest. We have to find Ripple Sponge, which is a drug. And drugs are bad. My thoughts ah, so this time there's actually nobody. The last time there was like a, a person cleaning the floor there. We have some weapons. Ah, so this wasn't here before. Okay. Ardas's bracelet. This bracelet is comprised of many small interwoven beads and is held together by a fine silver clasp. Together the beads form a stylized image of mountain peaks. Oh. You reach into the barrel and find a bracelet. A thick aura of essence clings to it, fresh with memory. You feel yourself drawn into it. In the memory, you stride into the fishery. The floors are swept clean, but the wood is still splotched with snowmelt and fish guts. A man hunkers in the corner his head nodding forward as if in sleep. He looks up drowsily as you approach. It's Grinda. His face is youthful but sallow, and his hair hangs in stringy locks. You feel a pang of anger and pity at your brother's debauchery. Arda. Oh, it's voiced. His voice is little more than a croak. It's past midnight. Your throat feels, feels tight. Grinda wipes at his nose and examines the mingled blood and powder on the back of his hand. He shrugs. Your fingers clench around coarse, thick fabric. Your father's best wool cloak tucked under your arm. Go! To raid Ceres or Defiance Bay or fucking Air Glonfath. I don't care! You hurl at the ingrate huddled on the floor. So we're, we're, we're seeing the soul of his sister. He picks up the cloak and looks at it with the same sort of dull wonder. He wipes his nose on the lining. That's disrespectful. A sudden rush of fury leaves your limbs weak and raw. I'll tell them. Mayor Cena healed. The neighbors. Everyone. You force the words through your teeth. But what? He mumbles, churning his words from a morass of snot and saliva. The stealing. You think I haven't noticed the money missing from the fishery coffers? Or heard Tana talk about losing a golden duke? You whisper, afraid even now that someone will overhear you, and the words scorch your throat. You can't be found when there's work to do. But every time those merchant wagons roll into town, you've got coin enough for a few bags of ripple sponge. No, it's not. He rubs his red-rimmed eyes. Your own grow warm and blurry. Stalwart tolerates your sponge habit, but they won't abide your thieving. You touch your bracelet, a gift from Mother, plucking at the beads. You won't. He rises, steadier on his feet than you would have thought. I will. You stride toward him, careful woman. 
Why is this part not voiced? I wouldn't have shamed mother and father while they was living, but I won't let this keep up. Your anger swallows the last of your pity. Anger at him for putting you in this position, for doubting your resolve, for failing to see. You're close enough to smell his stale, sour breath when he pushes you. You fall, watching his widening eyes and the ceiling spinning in your vision. <clears throat> Isn't this just like him? Grinda with the full, full tantrums, never thinking of anybody but himself, and now you're going to be nursing a headache for a week, just goes to show you can't help some people. But you remember him too, your baby brother running through the snow, slipping, falling on ice, and you're sleeping for... and you're... Is there no... punctuation here? And you're sleeping, falling, and there's a table behind you, but it shouldn't. The memory ends abruptly, jolting you back into the present with your heart hammering as your, and your palms sweating. Man, so he pushed his sister and she hit her head on the table and died. All because of drugs. <sighs> My dude, are we gonna face each other? The fishery door creaks open and in walks Grinda, staring at you and the bracelet in surprise and outrage. His face drains of color. You take shelter in our village and then ransack it like a common thief? You better explain yourself. His voice shakes, as do his wide, squared shoulders. Lurgolder, this I want to hear. Lurgolder watches you beneath lowered brows. You're the one that's explaining to do. What's that supposed to mean? You killed your sister, Arda, right here in this room. Wow, I have no chance to kind of uh, talk around this so the other people don't hear of it. Oh well. He opens his mouth to reply, but the words catch in his throat. The guard next to him stares at the bracelet, recognition turning to horror. It was an accident. I was a failure and a wretch then. But I, I never would have killed anyone. Least of all my own kin. And actually, I think I actually believe this. He turns his gaze down, offering his apology to his own clenched fists. Say nothing, listen. I gave her body to the lake, but I kept her bracelet to remember the cost of my own weakness. He loosens his hands and stares at the emptiness in his leathery palms. Lurgolder, he looks from Grinda back to you, wringing the handle of his weapon. I ain't asking for forgiveness. I know I don't deserve any. My penance is my work on behalf of the village. And they need it, truly. You've seen the shape this place is in. Have mercy on Stalward, if not on me. Let me do the work Arda would have done. That's my debt to Stalward, and the only fitting way to honor my sister. He looks up at you, his eyes bright and clear. Okay, so I guess now we have options. I can kill him just right here and now. I can toss him the bracelet, very well, here, taste your bracelet. Look at yourself, keeping this secret has taken its toll on you. Do you really want to feel this way? Pay me? No. Okay, honestly, I kind of believe it because he's been here for years uh, after killing his sister by accident, by the way, because we saw the memory. And he is helping the village. So I do believe it's an accident. I'm gonna... I'm, I'm gonna let this continue as is. Toss him the bracelet. Very well. Here, take the bracelet. He snatches it out of the air and looks at it in wonder and sorrow. Finally, he tucks it into his pocket. Thank you. Stalwart may not know what you've done for them tonight, but they'll hear of your honor. Okay, and I guess that's it, and we avoid the confrontation. Grinda convinced me not to turn him in. Galvino may be disappointed, but I think I made the right choice. Correct. Hey. So, if Galvino is disappointed, that's his problem. I'm gonna go by what I think is right. Uh, I don't know if speaking to Galvino again will uh, do something else regarding the quest. And we also completed... Ah, there we go. Major adventure completed. Zahua returns to the stronghold with experience and items. Spoils await in the Great Hall treasury chest. Hey. Okay. Um, 
So let me see. This is complete. I don't think it's gonna have anything more from Galvino. Ah, correct, okay. I don't know where this other part is. Maybe it's inside Durgan's battery. Ah, yeah, so the Devil of... This is a companion quest. His better half. Ah, this I know what it is. Companion quest, okay. Yeah, so I don't think... I need to go back to Galvino to complete any kind of part of this quest. I just need to search for the people that have, you know, souls from before. Do I have to go inside houses? Maybe. I'm guessing this is gonna work automatically. Let me just read this here. Oh no, I have to use it. Galvino created this strange device to detect souls that dwelled in Durgan's battery during a previous life. It sends out a pulse of energy generated by memories from soul fragments Galvino collected in the device's other shard. The individual's dormant lives resonate with the echo by momentarily pushing forward through their present life sea of consciousness. The subjects are not aware of what is happening, but the disturbance can be perceived through special lenses or, luckily, the eyes of a watcher. Okay, let me just store these. And ah, I have to, okay. I have to place them like here. So there's a person over there. Uh, she glowed in green, what does that mean? Got to speak up? My hearing ain't what it was. Okay, maybe. Reader's soul. You feel her essence humming and buzzing. Another personality and set of memories lies dormant within the soul, convulsing as if in fitful sleep. The contours of that dormant soul are sharp, ragged. As you reach out for it, it seizes you violently. You're standing in a darkened feast hall. Studied, sturdy tables and benches have been stacked against the door in the far end of the room. You know it won't be enough. A few dozen other dwarves from your tunneling crew await with you, shovels and pickaxes in their shaking hands. Sinove, please. If we go now, we can get behind the barricade. We we won't do any good here. Okay, they were being attacked. He's right, and you hear agreement in the quiet murmur of the others. But Arms Warden Maroon ordered you to hold your ground here. Yet, in those rising whispers, you hear the opening bars of mutiny. You've never tolerated insubordination from your crew, and you aren't about to start. So, you heft your pickaxe and swing it into a man's skull. Jesus. He collapses and the others fall silent. The acrid odor of urine rises from his body. That's not cool, man. We're gonna go down fighting. Anyone who feels differently can settle it with me right now. Your voice is hoarse from hours of shouting orders, but no one else moves. They cast their eyes down in the flickering torchlight. Something thuds against the door. The others raise their weapons picks, shovels, and a few swords, but they don't dare flinch. Your own pulse pounds at your temples. You pull back from Tainus' soul, but you feel Zenoves' wrath and ferocity tugging at you still. Her essence thrashes, lashing out at an unseen enemy. Zenove is powerful, but dangerous too. Her fury has anchored her to old and threatening memories. You consider that there may be others you could awaken. Okay. Tana, however, seems unaware of any of this, and she blinks back at you with cloudy, placid eyes. So we can awaken this one, but like the voice said, it looks like she's dangerous and also powerful. So we're going to be looking for something else. And I'm guessing that uh, the, the people glow in green when I use this. Of course. That's kind of a telltale sign to know that they can well. be used. I I have no idea, man. Hey there. Let me know if you need anything. Okay, read this all. The snowy paths peel away and the brisk air gives way to the acrid stench of smoke. A dark cloud billows up from the remnants of the burning house, at the far edge of a rocky field. 
You are low to the ground, held in place, and above you the wind tugs embers back and forth like firebugs. Not the... so brave now, are you? Oh, sorry. The vision in your left eye is clouded, such that the figure standing over you is a collection of rough smears of black, cast in silhouette by the fire. So yeah, not so brave now, are you? A dark shape swings towards your face, and the subsequent burst of agony jars you out of the memory and back into your own skin. What? Did I spill something on myself? Rayfall looks down at his clothing. Uh, farewell, I guess? This guy doesn't have anything, right? Hey. I'm not sure how to <laughs> how to use this item. Maybe it's because I'm in fast forward mode. I'll have to see. Okay, so right now What is it? If I take my character, I take off fast mode. This is 13 meter radius from the castle, so it should hit everything. Or at least this area. Nothing seems to have happened. I don't know. Warm your hand, Jay. What can oh, I do for okay, you? so I can after using it I can just speak to the people and see what's happening. You see a room dark and damp, a cellar. It looks like part of the inn rather than an old fortress. Through Heferic's eyes, you, you, admires, you admire rows of gleaming bottles recently dusted and polished. As you step back from the shelves, you look on with satisfaction at the pressure plate concealed in the stone floor. Ooh. You alright? I won't serve you if you're already drunk, you know. He squints at you. What have we discovered here? There's a secret at the, at the cellar. Hmm. My thoughts will be as silent as my feet. Oh, come on. For real? There's nothing? Oh, there's... Oh, I thought there was going to be something. This makes me very sad. At the pressure plate concealed in the stone floor. What is it? Come on. As you step back from the shelves. Is, is this something that I've already used, I wonder? Or am I just missing something? Hey. Well, I am sad, I gotta say. Oh, wait, the gambler's below. Give me a second. Maybe the gamblers below also have a soul that can be useful. Let's see. Well, so go over here. There's a named one, right? Yeah, this guy. Read his soul. For a moment, your senses are overwhelmed. There are fumbling hands at your belt and your own low and your own low laughter in your ears. Your shoulder is jammed up against the cabinet, and it rattles every time Berthwen leans down to kiss you. There's a, se a sedate pleasure to the memory, but nothing in it has much to do with the battery. Okay, so nothing over here. Hey. And I think we're gonna have to leave the rest for the next episode. <laughs> I don't like leaving quests midway, but... Of course. I, I think I have to do it, because there's a lot of people I have to talk to, right? These two are named, there's this lady over here, there's the bard, there's the other houses, yeah, so Back we'll have to your hand, do what this later. Do I'm just going to rest to get my buff over here, and let me see something. Ah, this also allows me to show it off. So, there we go. The Devil of Karok is a level 1 rogue, that's pretty much all we can see here. Um, oh, I also want to buy some more of this stuff, because I like this food that he has. The white Yennefer is also quite cool. Yennefer, yes. Okay, this should be enough. Trade, and let's sleep. So now we have the nice buff, we are ready for the next episode. You know, to continue 
interviewing people in the area to see if we can find a soul to awaken that doesn't cause much harm. But yeah, we'll see. So, my friends, as always, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, watching some Pillars of Eternity. I hope you guys are enjoying the White March expansion. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. There are videos coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.